guys, what's going on? We're back with episode four of the Jawas and Java podcast. This is my brother, Stefan. My name is Mike. And today we're going to be talking about everything going on in the past few days in the Star Wars universe. We've had interviews, we've had season finales, we've had news for upcoming shows. So we're going to be diving into a little bit of everything today. And I also ask you guys to please subscribe because what we're going to be doing tomorrow is a giveaway for the holidays. So we're going to be doing a Christmas giveaway. We will announce that later on our Instagram, what we'll be exactly giving away to you guys. It's obviously going to be Star Wars related and it's going to be very cool. So you're going to want to get uh, your notifications on on YouTube. So when that video pops up, you'll, you'll know exactly what we're giving away and how to get into that and join our giveaway. We'll also post it on Instagram. So you want to put your notifications on for that too. All right, Steph. So we had a uh, big interview with uh, Favro on uh, Good Morning America yesterday. So what'd you think? What would you think about the stuff that he touched on? Well, he, he cleared up a lot of stuff. He, he cleared up a lot of speculation, a lot of, especially a lot of speculation from us, which was that season three of The Mandalorian was actually going to be Book of Boba chapter one, which he cleared up. It's a completely separate show. And when Kathleen Kennedy announced The Mandalorian season three next year, she was actually talking about season one of Book of Boba. And it's 11 Star Wars series we're going to have confirmed in this universe and not 10, which is we, a huge deal. We talked, about, we talked about that too in, in, uh, in our first episode where we talked about the Investor Day and how we were surprised that Boba Fett because the rumors were swirling that Boba Fett was getting his own series. So we assumed yeah. we thought that- it was nipped in the bud. They, we thought they had different plans for him. And then we thought that the Mandalorian may have actually been Boba. Yeah. And we, and was- we, we thought that our theory was that Boba Fett was going to die right. as a hero. And yeah. we, and we were going to get the slave one passed down to um, Mando yeah. for next yeah. season. And that next season was coming in December. So we had a lot of speculations about what could be coming next season. But with the with that big finale that we got, we know, as far as I'm concerned, a little bit of a break with the yeah. way that the story is going. I really can't complain because they wrapped it up so well. And it makes right, me yeah. want to know what's going on in the future. But with all the stuff that we're going to get in the meantime, I'm okay with it. Well, that's, that's a, that's a huge piece of information also was the fact that the Mandalorian season three isn't actually in production because another thing that was heavily speculated on was that were we going to be piggybacking shows next December in 2021, which isn't the case because season three of the Mandalorian is actually not in production. Book of Boba is in production yeah. and Book of Boba is coming out December 2021, not The Mandalorian season three. The Mandalorian season three, I'm sure, is in pre production. They're writing, they're getting ideas. Who yeah. knows when it, it might be a time jump? It could I believe, be. I believe they said that once they were finished with The Mand- uh, with uh, the Book of Boba Fett, that's when they were going to go into exactly. the, the production. So they're, it's not that it's on the back burner because they're really probably, oh, ha- yeah, yeah, yeah. If, they, if they're getting this if they didn't want any spoilers out and they have to get the book of Boba, which I'm sure they've had the writers working on and everything's pretty much in place. uh, But they're probably going to rush this out, get it done because you only have a year now Mm -hmm. for for that. You know, they have to start advertising trailers and stuff like that, which we know with Disney, they can pretty much do really quick. Like with investor day, they they were throwing out stuff for Ahsoka and stuff for the investors that we didn't get to see, but a lot of people already know a little glimpse into the, what's going on into those uh, series. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And, and, and another big question is whether or not it's like one of those six, eight episode mini series, you know, basically one big movie, or is this now going to be its own four season show? There's still a lot, a lot, a lot yeah, we to be know. speculated on, on Boba, on, on Book of Boba. But at least we now know that Din and Grogu's story is not over. We know that The Mandalorian Season 3 is happening. It's just not December 2021. Who knows? It could be October 2022. We don't know. 2022 is just going to be a monster into itself. But yeah, Book of Boba is going to be wild. And uh, my big question was, uh, like, what is going to happen in The Book of Boba? One thing that I I think that we're going to get in some aspect, maybe uh, a discussion of how, or maybe a flashback clip, but I think we're going to get Boba prying his way out of a Sarlacc pit. Yeah. I think yeah. we'll get, because there's a lot of people, like you, you heard when uh, Bib said to, to Boba, uh, I've heard rumors. Mm-hmm. Seeing Boba Fett right now, 
was like seeing a ghost to all of these people in in the show. So yeah, sure. I, I, not 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 only for the the actual characters in the in the Star Wars universe, but for us, when Boba came out, we were like, "Whoa!" We all thought he was dead. Exactly. We so, basically had yeah, we had the same. And we all want to know how Boba yeah. got out of the Sarlacc pit, and all the people in the series are going to want to know how yeah, Boba. Sure. You know, where, where did you come from? How did you survive that? And we I mean, we all we were all like had like the same stammering reaction as Thick Fortuna, which was like, "We thought you were dead." We, we didn't know what to expect. You know, there were rumors. I remember when all this was leading up, we were, you know, I, you know, speculation of Boba coming back was, was around. And I was like, that doesn't make sense. We literally watched him get eaten. So everybody's going to have that reaction. They're going to have to clear that up. They're going to have to clear that up, even if it's verbally, if he explains to somebody somewhere. And another thing that I was thinking too is it's, it's very, the, the throne he's sitting in, the setting he's in, is very very mafia esque. Oh yeah. Well, like just so, which what that's what the huts were. And right. That's who ran My question it, is, know? do we get another hut? Do we get do we get him kind of cleaning up Tatooine? Is Cobb Vanth gonna be in it? There's a ton of things to speculate on on Tatooine. Even if the entire series takes place on Tatooine, there's so much to break down now, and I can't see why it's not possible that it would, for the sake of he's running the joint now. You know what I mean? And uh, one thing, one thing that I really loved, and I, I sent it to you over the weekend when I was uh, Christmas shopping, last minute Christmas shopping, I popped into a store and I saw the big uh, book. It's called the Ar- Archives of, of the Original Series. Mm. And there was a quote in that book because I was skimming through and I saw a few pages that had to do with uh, Boba falling into the Sarlacc pit. And there was a quote from George Lucas, which I have up on my phone, where he says, Boba Fett became such a favorite of, of everybody's that for having, and he had such a small part. He had a very large presence. Had I known he was going to be so big, I would have made his death way more theatrical. Right, yeah, exactly. And he also puts in there, a lot of people don't believe he's dead anyway. And this is a quote from years ago that George Lucas Mm -hmm. said. And I think that quote really resonated with people. And he... and, and. He realized that he can bring him back, and and yeah, and, I mean, listen, and no, Favreau no and Filoni knew that yeah. people want to see Boba again, and and that's what I really loved that quote because that's such an old quote, but in this time exactly. with with the Boba Fett getting his own series, it's unbelievable. Exactly, what, and and the fandom that's behind Boba Fett, right? Of course, you know, and of so course, George and saw that that vision. Yeah, and it's like it it's like it also came from George which makes it like ridiculously easy to stomach, makes oh, it even more satisfying, makes it, you know, makes everything about like, if you thought, let's say, okay, we watched Boba get eaten, him coming back, blah, blah, blah. Listen, George said it was possible. Anybody can come back. That's the bottom line. And Filo- Anybody can come back. Filoni is worked so closely with George Lucas. And yeah. there's photos of George on set with the guys on the Mandalorian. So, you know, he's, he's got a presence there you know, they're discussing things and little tidbits of George's vision is still in Star Wars. And then you have these two guys like Filoni and Favreau that are just taking it to the absolute Mm -hmm. next level. Yeah. I mean, listen, he's he's still, he's still going to sets and whatnot. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's still, he's still involved. He didn't, you know, knock on wood, you know, but he, you know, he's still here. He's still here with us. Like people tend to talk about George Lucas as if like, as if like he's like a Walt Disney, like oh, what would George think? Call George and ask him. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's what you know. Filoni is capable of doing. Well, if, I, if if it comes down to what would George do, what would Lucas do? That's you. We can find out. You know, we can get him on set. We can get him involved, and they do. So when the sequels were being made, there was a lot of talk about George Lucas and how he's not involved with Star Wars and how he sold the company and how he kind of sold out on Star Wars and stuff. And now there's so many interviews. Well, first of all, the fa- fact that he's back and he's in the forefront shows that he missed Star Wars. Yeah. 100%. And, you know, he this was his baby. But this was a guy who had a vision on making a movie and he had no idea it was going to blow up the way that it did. Yeah, and just yeah. and for one person to be in charge of something so huge. Now you have one guy and everything is falling on this one guy. Now yeah. it's a little different because now it falls on Favreau. It falls on Filoni. It falls on all these other directors that are mm-hmm. getting a piece of each episode. It yeah, falls on so writers. many different shoulders. So now we have a bunch of collective minds. George was one person who 
had a huge vision and now you gave him the three original movies and and he also has a life so that was a lot yeah. of things because he speaks about how he's when he sold star wars it was because he he knew he was getting older yeah he wife to settle and down kids. have it's, wife and yeah. kids you i'm know? sure i'm sure if he i'm sure if it was physically possible to be a functioning normal human being and run star wars he would have loved to have do so love love to do so he didn't yeah. he didn't just back pocket it and get rid of it because he doesn't love it and it's not his baby it's still his baby it's always going to be his baby and he's always going to have some sort of like i said if i'm i'm sure Filoni pick up the phone, give him a call, ask him a question, and he's going to answer. I think that's what's gonna, going on right no, now. Exactly. And I think Baloney yeah, think- studied with him and cares so much about Star Wars that – there's some stuff that Filoni can tie together that George couldn't even have had that that right. that that imagination on certain things. And that's why it's great right. to have a couple people working on a project that's so huge and has so much, you know. Yeah, and that's why and that's why John, John Favreau and Dave Filoni are the perfect, perfect duo. Because you have this amazing, amazing screenwriter, director, writer, and John Favreau. And then you have Filoni, who is so in-depth and in love with this series and this universe and brings all the lore to it. So you have basically John's genius with Dave's lore and love for this, and it's the perfect match. It, 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 couldn't, it couldn't be better. And, and, and the other day, I know, I know I mentioned something like this to you, but I just wanted to expand on it. So like a lot of people on the internet or, or writing articles and stuff are saying like, because we, we were speculating for a few days that Mandalorian was done and not, we know that nothing's ever done and, and, and the story of Grogu and the story of Mando are going to go on, but we didn't also know if it was going to be next, uh, you know, in December, the right, following we didn't know year, if, gonna be a movie if we were going to get a years. movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We didn't know, but what, but people said, Disney's not going to leave money on the table. Grogu makes money. Mando makes money. And you're 100% right. But yeah. I truly, truly believe that Dave Filoni and Favreau are in this story and in this because of Star Wars yeah. and not just the money. And of course, they're yeah. making money for Star Wars. But their, I think their mindset really is we're going to put Star Wars first. We're going to put the story first before we keep pushing out crap that doesn't right. make sense because what's going to happen is if they just keep doing it for the money, nothing's going to tie together. Nothing's going to make sense. You can't fix the little loopholes. You can't, it's just going to be too much and it's going to yeah. kill Star Wars. And then the Grogu merch will be sold at TJ Maxx for $2, just like yeah. some, you know, you just could like go solo get some, merch. You could like go get solo merch and Five Below. Yeah, and, we can go to Five Below tomorrow and get a whole load. catalog of, of you know, solo merch. And, and, not, and listen, some people like solo. I'm not a fan of solo. But, I, but that's I, not the point. Yeah, no, it's not even the point. I think that, I, yeah, but but I think that the merch didn't sell as well. I think that yeah. a lot of the, you know, we we went into Five Below and we were like, oh my God, a, a Ray and a, and a Kylo. And we were so excited. But the problem is, is that that stuff is being sold because they made so much of it and people weren't buying it. And even though you could go get the Grogu little things like that, it's selling, it's, it's still fresh. You know, the, yeah. the merch for The Mandalorian is fresh. And once you start killing it off, you start losing money. And I think they're all about the Star Wars world. And we also, and- and we also all, like we, like Star Wars fans, all win from what Favreau oh, announced on Monday, which is that these are two separate shows. Like, I don't think that it's an opportunity for one group of people to say, I told you so. Another group of people to say like this, that, this, and the third and argue about it. I think we all win. We just found out we're getting another show on top of the doozy oh, yeah. that got dropped on us at, at the investor uh, on the investor call. When they announced ten series or ten, or pro- productions, whatever movie you know series, I I couldn't I lost my mind because we yeah. there was a time when we wanted so badly one Star Wars product to come out, just one yeah. Star Wars product to come out, just give us one more movie. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure. Listen, 2022 can be absolutely out of control because I mean. The Mandalorian season three, I don't know when that's going to come. And I do assume that that's going to be a a pretty significant time jump. But we do know that Obi-Wan and Andor are going to be 2022. So we're going to get December... So we all right. We might have a little bit of a of a hiatus here. We're gonna have you know a couple novels. You know the the next Thrawn book. We're gonna oh, have yeah. the High Republic book, et cetera, et cetera. But once we get to December, we're gonna have Book of Boba, and then in twenty twenty two, we know we have 
two monster shows coming and we don't even know about mando season three mando season three could still be capping off 2022 i know well, who knows? We, we we really don't know but that that was a huge 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 breaking news and i felt like the star wars community kind of capitalized on like like what you said which was like oh uh, disney's not leaving money on the table you know what i mean like, yeah because- disney looked bad making star wars fans who were confused look bad but in reality we all win because now we're getting the mandalorian season three and book of boba that's out of control and all they did was they kept it hush hush at the investors meeting for favreau to have his huge finale and oh and what that's what i loved I, I loved when um because we could never have fathomed how the Mandalorian ended. We could have never have thought of or even pieced together what the finale of Mandalorian was going to be like. And we got something that was beyond our expectations. And I love the fact that, first of all, that Mark Hamill was involved yeah. with with the finale. He was on set. Uh, Favreau did say that on Good, Good Morning America when he did his interview. And, I lo- and it could have been leaked at any time. And he said, oh, there's a be- lot of people that were involved. So Mark Hamill was on set for the Mandal- for the finale of the Mandalorian to film his f- to film, and that just shows how great they are and how hard they're working at keeping leaks from dropping. Because I've, almost every other character, Rosario Dawson, Bo Katan, almost all of those were leaked. Yeah, the most important leak would have I been agree. Luke Skywalker. Well, that the- would have changed everything for the way that we would have looked at the season and viewed what was coming. Yeah the way that we felt at the end of the season, like that was genuine. There's a lot of videos of people who were sobbing at the thought and of Luke entering in. And, and then when you saw his face and it, you wouldn't other, have got that feeling. All the other leaks were very like stomachable and they also like created anticipation. Yeah. So, like I wasn't bummed out that Ahsoka got leaked. It nah, just, no made me, I can't wait for the Ahsoka episode. Yeah. Same thing with Bo-Katan, whereas the Luke leak would have been, would have been a bummer. You know what I mean? Because oh, it, it, it would have yeah, ruined that the finale. That would have been a really big bummer. So that's the one leak that didn't get leaked that, that would have changed everything. Whereas the Ahsoka leak, listen, we, they didn't even, Bo tells us in that that Ahsoka is gonna come. Oh yeah. Bo in episode three says, "Go to such and such, and and you will meet Ahsoka Tano." So even if Ahsoka doesn't get leaked, we still would have been waiting for her for two episodes. Exactly. To create that anticipation. And we knew, and we knew it was two episodes later because we knew that we, Filoni yeah, we, was. Exactly. You know, we 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 knew once we saw who was directing the fifth yes. episode, we knew yeah. exactly that that was going to be the scene. We didn't know how we were getting it. We still were shocked because, like yeah, I said, I they, I remember us watching that together, and I put on the TV, and I said, just so you know, we're probably going to get her at the end of the episode, like a real quick clip or something, and it yeah. shot off with it. We were amazed, even though we knew she was coming, we were still amazed. They do a great job. Yeah, which would not have been the, I mean, it would have been the same effect as Luke. I'm sure we still would have like, popped for him when he came out, but but still. Uh, it, was, it, just, it, was it, it would have been, yeah. The, the, the tears and the emotions were a different level. So, yeah, so the Luke thing would have killed a bunch of momentum. And what also is really exciting about how we basically got Book of Boba reconfirmed and official as its own separate show and that it's in production, which is really big information, was the fact that all these other shows are complete question marks. So it's also satisfying to know for a 100% fact that we have Andor, Obi-Wan, Book of Boba, and Mando Season 3. Those four shows are in production and pre-production and are happening. Whereas we have these other shows, like like I'll, I'll use this as an example, Lando, which we don't know anything about it. They have a, they have like a writer and a director, which we've seen before with Star Wars, that they just nip things in the bud. And in three years from now, we could be like, oh, remember when they were talking about doing Lando and it never happened? Oh, 100%. And, and and Lucasfilm couldn't agree on a oh, well Donald and Disney couldn't agree on a on a on a contract. So it's really even more satisfying now that okay we have Book of Boba one hundred percent we have you know et cetera et cetera all these other shows don't even have casts or or some don't have writers directors and 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 years that they're coming out. So yeah. we got another show and we're getting it soon. And there there could be twists and turns like we could have a show where all of a sudden a character gets so big that they end up getting their own spinoff and they act something else that they couldn't get together. Because as far as I'm concerned from what I'm reading and what I'm seeing is that uh, Donald Glover is not signed on. I know. I don't I, I don't think it's possible that he is. 
because if Glover was signed on, it would be advertised. Glover would arguably be one of the most famous leads in a Star Wars anything ever. You know what I mean? Donald Glover, Childish Gambino would be the most famous lead in a Star Wars movie ever. That would be shoved down our throats to a degree that, and, and that I wouldn't blame them. That brings a lot of new eyes. Like there's a lot 100%. of people who don't watch Star Wars who Without might tune in to see him. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. That brings an entire other cultural fan base. So the fact that they're not even mentioning him and not saying his name and not showing his picture makes me think that there's no way he signed any papers. And I don't know what, why, I don't know if it's a contract dispute. I don't know if maybe they, they like, there's an issue with COVID because we know that Disney lost a ton of money. So maybe they can't pay someone as famous as him. But, uh, but yeah, that shows like that. I even speculate, are these even going to end up happening? So when it when I see something like Boba and we already have the, uh, theories, we know it's in production, we know it's coming, that it's really satisfying. And uh, to get back into Boba, uh, the book of Boba, since that's pretty much our main topic today, uh, I have, you know, in, in terms of predictions with that, I mean, I would love to see Cobb Vanth come back because like you said, we might see other characters. Cobb Vanth, to, uh, you know, Oliphant, that whole thing became so big. Oh, I don't think there's a Star Wars fan or Mandalorian fan that didn't love that character and love, you know, love everything about that episode. Could you imagine the scene where Cobb sees Mando, I mean, uh, sees Boba in the same armor? Mm-hmm. I mean, he might not even recognize it because it's so uh, cleaned up right now. Yeah, and I mean, but- from a big picture political standpoint... He's basically running that whole town. Yeah. Now you have Boba running this whole area. So, I mean, I would love, even if that wasn't the original plan. We don't, even, we don't know how Cobb's doing without that armor. Yeah. That armor was the reason why Cobb was the way that he was. And after they... We can't forget, we can't forget that now uh, this, the, uh, the Tusken Raiders yeah. and like humans are on good terms now. It was almost like they had, or a maybe lot- they're not, or maybe they're not, and and, and now they just teamed Boat up together dragon. to get rid of the the Kray dragon, and now they they were they were I mean they are told to be savages. <laughs> yeah, but they were humanized, and they you know, were. They, they kind of what they did in the Mandalorian is they kind of humanized them, and they kind of made them from a standpoint of like this is their land. Tatooine was of their course. planet, and then humans invaded it. Of kind course. of. Thing. So you sympathize with them, you root for them, and all that stuff. So there's a lot, there's a lot for Boba to be doing on that planet right now. I wonder if the entire planet, not the entire planet, the entire show is going to take place on that planet, or if it's if he's going to be doing, you know, missions all over the galaxy like Din. I think he'll be running around a little bit. I mean, I think he'll take a lot of, it'll take a lot of, uh, he'll he'll have a lot of time on Tatooine, but I think that he'll go, he's going to have to leave for an episode at least you know my favorite uh my favorite conversation right now is how like what if boba would have saw luke um oh I that's, got a doubt. That's which a makes so right much there. sense why they didn't have that couldn't boba. happen <laughs> yeah 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 i didn't we couldn't have had that kind of negative energy because there's because, a lot of beef there yeah well the, the problem is, is that that interaction would have had to be something and if the interaction wasn't something then not even like a like a look over and like a what the is going on here like if that didn't happen then everyone would be saying like oh this makes no sense luke didn't recognize boba boba didn't recognize luke and you know and han and han is running around right now in the galaxy it's true han and boba have a ton of ton of issues i mean i don't know there's so many routes they can go with this show do you think that if you think we're ever gonna see han like even if they do talk about if they we do see Luke training the Jedi, like, I mean, like the or, actor, or, like Alden coming back to play guess, yeah. on, in like Boba, I don't think so. I mean, it could happen. Obviously, like I said, we only make theories that are constantly going to get debunked. But I, I, I don't think so. Do you think I the next? I kind of think I kind of think they completely ended all that, and and even from the get go. Solo ended up not doing as well from the fans and financially as, as they hoped. You have but so much way, other stuff going I, on right now that you don't need to dabble on that. No, no, but, but even either way, like the golden goose in that movie probably wasn't Alden and Han. Yeah. It was probably Lando and Donald Glover. Like that was the golden goose there. 
Like that was what they were going to do. If they were going to make a, like a, you know, a solo spinoff, Kiara or, uh, or Lando would be my assumptions as where the money would be. I don't, I wouldn't expect it to go into another Han. See, the, the one thing that really, really intrigues me about anything Lando or like that whole era is Maul. That's the oh, one yeah. thing that really, because they a lot planted, of Crimson Dawn stuff. Because as far as I'm concerned, I didn't like Solo, but when Maul was on the screen, I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. So I don't know if they would have announced the show Maul, I would have lost my mind. <laughs> yeah. You know, like even though we don't really need too much more of Maul, especially a series, because you kind of had his story in Rebels, and we we there's no. We we might get something in uh, Obi Wan too. Well, that's uh, that's probably where. Well, that's probably where I would have expected him if Darth Vader didn't get confirmed. So a week but, and a half ago, two weeks ago, I would have been saying, "Oh, more, 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 more cameo, more yeah. something." Now I don't. You think they're gonna give us? Let's say let's say Obi Wan Kenobi's eight episodes. We're getting Vader and Obi Wan in those. Uh, excuse me, Vader and Darth Maul in those eight episodes. Like, what what, if, I don't know what the. What if we about. get the three? What are we? What if we got the three of them at one moment? That would be insane. That would be really crazy. <laughs> Anything is possible. They're pulling out all the guns. Because I would love I can't to even see. see like, I oh, would love too much. They would never do that because anything is possible. I would love to see Vader and Maul because. Maul's not a fan of Vader. Of course not. And Sidious too. Him and Sidious are on really bad terms. So exactly. So that's another thing too. So are we getting like I know we're getting Vader. Are we getting Sidious and Obi-Wan? My I would assume so. Is, my assumption is, which like I said, I'm sure is gonna de be debunked way before the series even comes out, but my assumption is that Vader is going to be playing a Vader in Rogue One role which is he's not the primary villain. He's not on screen that much, but he is there. His face is on the posters. He has a couple of cameos, et cetera, et cetera. I don't, I don't think we're going to be getting Vader. I don't think Vader is going to be like the main bad. I could see his role kind of being like Rogue One, which is if there's eight episodes... He has a cameo in three of them, and it's enough for us to go ballistic and for them to, you know, sell awesome merch and have awesome moments and make us lose our minds and stuff like that. But I don't, I don't, I don't know if he's going to be this big bad. You know what I mean? I, I don't yeah. know if I expect any of that. It could be, he could be just there for one fight scene. I mean, we have to expect a huge fight scene because they, you know, they emphasize the rematch. So it, it's safe to assume a big fight scene between Obi Wan and uh, and Vader, but yeah. like besides stuff like that, I don't I don't know how much Vader I'm expecting. I can't wait for that. Me too. Me too. It's 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 one of those things where like like I, I'm kind of a hypocrite because there's some stuff I'm like we don't really need to see, but like this was something I probably would have said like oh like if somebody was just talking to me I would be like oh yeah we don't really need to see that we know like what pretty much went on then when they announced it I was like I when they I, I, even if there's because people like there could be like a loophole they didn't see each other for a long time and stuff but I, I don't yeah I, I really I, I could care less about that yeah. I can't wait to see this and I think they're gonna knock it out of the park and give us an extension to a story because we're just assuming they didn't see each other for this long gap and now they we know that they obviously will and right. I just think that they're going to knock it out of the park and make it just, you know, this is one right. time, this is one time. And in between this happened and we're going to accept it and love it. Yeah. And who knows? Like I said, we, we, we don't necessarily, they could do it so smooth and so well that they will. we don't care that there's loopholes here and there, which I personally never really do. No. Like the only time loopholes have like made me like think and scratch my head was maybe in like the solo movie here and there, but that was just me, you know, yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's a, that's that a different not type. Not wanting that film to exist. Yeah, that's a different type that of was, loophole. That's that's more of like, a, uh, like this isn't this this isn't that, what that was, this isn't what really happened. I'm not going to believe you that this is how yeah, it happened. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like this, this isn't, isn't this, canon. Like yeah, that's this, this can't be it. how Chewbacca and Han Solo met. This, yeah, you know, yeah like, I don't I don't necessarily 
feed into it. I don't believe that Han had like a love interest that was all lovey dovey pre Leia. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he wasn't vulnerable at all. He was very vulnerable with Kiara. He was very vulnerable. Wasn't vulnerable at all with Leia up until up until the end. And I didn't need to see that. I didn't need to see Han with another love interest like that because he's a scoundrel. He, you know, like yeah, he, he didn't. He wasn't. He, he, wasn't he, like, he didn't have to be. He didn't have to be a hero growing up. You know what I mean? He yeah. he could have just been a scoundrel, and Listen, he was and became a hero. We didn't need to see that. Oh, he's always been a hero. Yeah, no, I, I say I say it about him in uh, episode four all the time in the cantina. Han was a really bad guy in a room full of bad guys. Oh yeah, like he was. You know, that's what he was. He was a, when we saw him in the cantina and the scene with Greedo and and the way that he was acting and the, you know. When when they when Obi Wan and Luke leave the table and he's talking to Chewie and he's like, oh, these guys must be really desperate. Like he's almost like swindling them and like yeah. that's all I wanted. He murdered. He, he, and then he, he murdered. He, he murdered Nalian in in, in the yeah. movie. They they had to change it. I know which, four times over the past forty years. So now they have it so that they both shot at the same time. But like I said, that's that's how that's how ruthless it was. Yeah. But um. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get a lot of stuff. That yeah, know. you know, we we've got a lot of stuff to talk about, and I think we touched on a lot of stuff today. So, yeah, for sure, we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll leave this open for comments and everybody to give us some feedback, and then we'll continue this conversation with everybody. So, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the episode of Jawas and Java. And as always, if you could like and subscribe and join our uh, YouTube community. Leave us a comment after you watch the video and let us know what you thought. And don't forget to turn on notifications for our Instagram. Don't forget to turn on notifications for our YouTube because we're going to be posting a giveaway that you're not going to want to miss. You're going to, you're going to really want this, especially for the holidays. It's a nice little treat for the holidays. So, And also, don't forget to check out our merch shop where you can get all your Jawas and Java merchandise. We got the maroon hoodie, the mugs. Soon we'll probably have some of these... Uh, ice coffee cups for the ice coffee drinkers. All right, guys. So thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye, Steph. Right. Thanks.